What's up, guys? Here I am. Sorry that I was a little bit late to the stream. I had to restart the computer and all that baloney. But here I am. We're back. Um, coming with me. Today, I've got a bunch of the same shirt to paint over and over and over again. Um, but it's an interesting shirt, so at least it'll be cool to paint. Um, I'm not sure how long the stream will be today. Probably won't be the whole order, but we can hang out for a little while. See what happens. All I can promise is that I'm gonna paint a little bit of t-shirts now. Alright, so I'm painting the word Mason over and over again in this style here or something similar. I gotta remember to talk in the microphone, sorry about that. Uh, here I am. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get into it. M-A-I-S-O-N. It's just a graffiti style, but it's got like sharp corners and stuff. I wanna focus on making sure I'm using those sharp corners on all the designs. I haven't done this design this style in a long time, so. We'll see how it goes. What's going on, guys? Hello, 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 hello. What's up, dude? Okay. The first one's gonna be a little slow, and then the rest of them are gonna go faster and faster. I gotta kind of concentrate. Crave, way to start out with some generosity. Thank you, man. Sweet. That's awesome, dude. Congratulations on 102, thank you. Still going at a steady speed. Um, I guess I'll put this halo on there too, because they did. And something like that. I mean, that's fine. It's just, just some text. <laughs> thank you, guys. So I spaced out my letters, as always. I gotta not do that, that's like a whole different style. I gotta use like sharp corners. They just want the whole design in black and gray. Keep up the great work. Pat Games told you to reach out to me for better business practices. I'm cool with that. Um, yeah, let me get this first shirt kind of going so I can I can focus on this. And then we can have a good old question answer session about whatever. It's a Dale, it's a Dylan. What's going on, Dylan? Welcome to Dale the Airbrush Guy in Dale the Airbrush Garage. You've been here before. This mic is all in my grill. I don't really want to do the halo on top. I'm going to do it anyway. Alright, it's fine. That's cool. Yeah, Crave, that's, that'd probably be better. Just send me a message. I'd be happy to help you out. Of whatever you need. I don't need to do this. Once or twice. All right, let me do the black outlines. Once I get this first one down, we're gonna start rolling way faster and doing doing better work. This order is definitely gonna take all day long to paint because there's like a bunch of these, which is super awesome. I'm stoked to have big orders like this that allow me to continue to make these videos with some financial freedom. It is a worthwhile endeavor to spend my time doing graffiti artwork for a living. You'll never see me complaining about that. 
How you get exactly straight on the gray lines? Get it? Oh. Well, I will say this: controlling an airbrush, it's hard to control the airbrush at the beginning, right? You, your finger control and muscle memory and and all of that is difficult at first. But once you have basic muscle memory and control over the airbrush, the ability to go over your old lines and trace and the smoothness of your lines comes way more naturally when you're using an airbrush because you get to use your whole body. Right? I'm not just using my wrist to get that line perfect. I get to use my whole body to make a perfectly straight, smooth line. Um, that and like 10, 15,000 hours of airbrushing will get you the, the control that you need. When I'm using like a tablet with Procreate or just sketching in a sketchbook or something, I have to draw my lines a couple times in a row. Like I gotta, you gotta like undo and redo it and try to get that line just right. Um, with airbrushing, obviously you don't have that luxury, but I don't need it quite as much because when you're painting bigger, it's easier to, to land directly on your target. So yeah, it takes some practice and stuff, but it's just really easy to control an airbrush once you get the hang of it. What's going on, Pat? Dale noticed sometimes you do the outlines first and sometimes at the end of the design. Why is that? Well, I typically have always done the outlines first because, well, because I can, first of all. Um, in the airbrush world, all your paint is somewhat transparent, so you can take these black outlines and then I can fill it in with color, and it doesn't cover up the black outlines. You can still see them nice and crisp. Uh, with the spray can, that's not really possible, because all your spray paint is opaque, and if I filled this in with blue, it would cover up all the black and all you would see was blue. I, again, airbrushing doesn't do that, so I have the ability to do the outlines first, and I enjoy doing the outlines first. Um, it's faster for me, personally, with my style and the way that I went about making these designs for so long that it's just natural to me to do it that way. But I've noticed that if I spend more time on my first sketches and my fills and whatnot, sometimes it, it's just more, I get more detail into it, uh, more time is spent figuring out where things are going to go, and if I, if I have more time to put into a design, sometimes I'll spend a lot more time on the sketches before I do the outlines, just just to let more detail come into to life and existence with that. Um, it's also more satisfying to watch sometimes, to see all the colors come in and then the outlines at the end, a nice crisp finish. Um, so, when I go back and watch my videos, which I do to make sure that like I'm improving them, I notice that it's more satisfying to me to watch the outlines happen at the end. So, I do that sometimes. Taking notes from the teacher. Okay. I want these designs to look finished and look really good, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on each one of them. So, I'm going to make do techniques that add visually add a lot to the design, but that aren't going to take me a lot of time to do. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Guys, the, the generosity is coming in strong off the bat. Thank you, man. And hey, Todd, what's going on? I never expected to just have the generosity that you guys show me. I want to do, okay, in the interest of adding detail and saving time, I'm going to do a different type of background than I normally do. I'm going to fade just some paint off of the top here. Notice my gradient kind of stopped, it got lighter up here, and now I'm going to go back in heavy with this dark color to contrast those white parts. And then I'm going to pick a few concave corners to do that too as well. And then I'm just going to do a white line around the design that's going to make everything pop out.
first I need to add some white paint to this. I guess I got a new model to open up. You always want to make sure to shake your white paint really good. I'm going to show you a technique for that. Um, when you're sh all right, let me start over with this white. White separates really easily, and so you want to make sure to shake it really well before you use it. So plug your air hole, obviously, and shake it up real good. But after you do that, all the paint that's still in this tube right here has not been shaken up, and that did separate as well. So you need to back flush that paint into the bottle. And you do that by putting your finger on the needle and pushing down for just air. Hopefully you can see this. Watch the bottom of this straw. It'll just shoot paint back into the bottle. And now that paint is ready to be mixed in with the rest of the paint in the bottle. Um, if you don't do that, then you're gonna get, a, get like a, like you didn't shake the ketchup bottle and you get a squirt of water instead of ketchup. And nobody wants that. That's a ruined hot dog. And I never measure my reducer. Is this the Pat Games? That is the Pat Games. The Pat Games. All right. Again, interest of time, I'm only going to put a little bit of white highlight at the very bottom. I'm not going to outline all of these letters. I mean, I'm not going to do like up here and everything. And then, as I was saying with that gray overspray, I'm just going to do a little bit of white there. It's very quick to do. And it adds another layer of detail to everything. This white stroke or any stroke around the whole design is called a key line in the graffiti world. So I'm told. And that's it. It's got enough of a finish to it that it looks like a complete design and it's quick to do. And now I've got like a dozen more to do at least. How do you determine what to do on a shirt that's not on the original design? I don't know, man. I just look at it and. Mostly it's about filling up the right amount of space and getting enough, I guess you'd call it detail into it to make sure that it kind of looks finished. Um, I don't know. That's where your art comes in, I guess. That's another thing, hoping the customer likes it when they get it, yeah. What brand of airbrush did you say you used? I have several that I use. Um, the Omni 3000 by Badger, sorry, has been my favorite over the years. And lately I've come across a new one that's been really great uh, called the No Name Airbrush on Spray Gunner. It acts very similar to the Badger. It's similarly priced, they're both about 80 bucks. Um, it's this one here. And it just, it sprays a much stronger stream of paint you know it's just it's more like a spray can it just throws down a bunch of paint real fast um, and this will be my reference shirt for the day they're not all gonna be the same but I'm gonna kind of make sure they look like each other a little bit and normally I would just do one step at a time assembly line style all day long because it's a little bit faster that way but that's no fun to watch so we'll just do it this way final go outline force field that makes sense i know there's a lot of different names to every aspect of graffiti stuff I 
Hi, bud. Hmm. Hello from your nap nose. <laughs> My little buddy woke up. There's no sense in trying to hide him from the streams because he's gonna sneak out here all the time anyway. So if you stick around long enough you will meet him, you will see him paint, you will see him throw a tiny temper tantrum every now and then. It's part of life. What you doing in the same style? Kinda yeah, I'm gonna start kinda branching off from the same from this style a little bit. Where would you Find those guns. I was the the no name you find from spraygunner.com is the only place you can get that, and the Omnis, the Badger Omni 3000s, you can get from anywhere. Um, just Google them. Some places are better than others. They're all pretty similarly priced. The most boring part of these designs is this drop shadow piece. Maybe I should think of a different way to, to finish these letters and just not do that same thing all the time. You know? Talk about something while I do boring stuff. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna. I've been trying to do the same style and stuff like this because they ordered all the same shirts and I wanted to be consistent for them. But I think I'm going to not worry so much about that. And I'm just going to kind of paint what I want to. I mean, it's going to be similar to the design, but it's not going to be exactly the same. If they like the work enough to order from me, then they should expect and welcome a little bit of variation. I think. My perspective 3D, that's too much. I would, but uh, in the interest of time. And it would look so much different than the rest. I do want them to have similarity to them. But yes, some perspective 3D would be awesome. I've been working on those lately. I've been doing a lot of sketching on my tablet. going on a trip this week actually to go see Mr. Pat Gaines himself and I'm going to do a lot of sketching while I am there is that a booger or am I out of paint both both If you know or watch anime, what's your favorite anime show? It's been some years since I've watched anime. I have been thinking about getting into a new one for a long time. Every time I get a little kick of wanting to do that, I go back and watch Naruto again. Um, but I get to like fighting Zabuza and I'm like, alright, I'm done now. I noticed that you paint left-handed. Can you airbrush right-handed? I certainly can, Pat. Who do you think I am? I gotta get more paint. Good old classic medium gray. Can you do a giveaway of your shirts? I've done those before. I'll probably do some more. Um, thing with doing a giveaway on shirts is you got to be the right size. 
and that really limits the people interested in your shirt. So I try to do a giveaway of like a canvas or something. Hey, Michaela. My stream is getting raided by my little sister. See, I used to have the luxury of just doing a stream with random people on the internet. And now, I always got a bunch of siblings and cousins coming in and spying on me. There it is, look at that. Look at that. That's a good one. And that would be why my gray paint wasn't working. You're coming to see. <laughs> You're gross. What's my favorite movie? Much better. I don't know. What is my favorite movie? I've been wanting to see Interstellar again lately. That's an old. It's, it's crazy to say it's an old one now. Um, I don't know. What, what should my favorite movie be? I like. I used to love the old 007 movies, but it's been years since I've seen those. I like space movies, as long as they're realistic, like sci-fi type of movies. If they're not realistic, I just like making fun of them, which is annoying to everybody else that watches a movie with me. Did I finish that? Yeah, it looks like that one. We're done. Next we have, let's see what the next shirt is here, a 3X. Oh, I thought it was only two 3x's. It's three 3x's. Meh. <laughs> I have a question. Are from you which country? I am from America. The United... Well, I don't know if you call them United anymore. From the States of America. In whatever capacity they are existing in at the moment. Paint. Do you ever add retarder to your paints? Um, retarder, no. I do add reducer. Is that what you said? Well, you said something else. But I do add reducer to my paints. Um, usually just black and white. Sometimes my other colors too, but typically just the, the opaque ones. Um, I spray it like 60 to 70 psi. So I don't need as much reducer as some people do. I hope these go on the front. Good thing they do, because I would have just... Mm. I've done that before. I've gotten through a whole big order and then realized I painted them on the back of the shirt. Or I was supposed to paint them on the back of the shirts. How many siblings do you have? If so, who's your favorite? And there's my mom. Oh my goodness. My dad's probably in here just not chatting too. I have 38 siblings. How is your, your mom gonna ask who's your favorite sibling? Terrible. Trying to, I'm gonna try to pitch you guys against each other. on the 100k thank you how long have i been painting profession i have been airbrushing for 12 years i think i've been saying that for like two years so let's see 
Yeah, I started painting airbrushing in 2009, so I guess it's only 11 years. I don't know. I don't know. It feels like 12 years. You can do your own math. I don't know what's going on there. Don't worry about that. How is the podcast coming along? I don't have a podcast. Thank you, Dylan. It's true. So awesome seeing where you were at from starting in a garage studio that wasn't converted and a compressor that wasn't muted to streaming in a huge circle. Yeah, man. Um, it's been a journey. It's been fun to, to progress from where I was. Dylan has been around since before any of the, uh, the social aspects of my art. He was a bro hanging out in the garage with me for a while. And he's a big part of the inspiration to continue to do this and grow. Um, yeah, man, one step at a time. I've changed things and improved things. Getting that loud air compressor out of here was one of my favorite changes. The studio looks different. I'm kind of tethered to a cord here, but I'm going to back up and see, show you what it looks like. I forgot you couldn't hear me again. Oh, these are gonna be tedious. Sorry guys, I'm not paying attention to all the chat. I need to work quickly and try not to be um, doing doing the same thing over and over again is something I struggle with enjoying. I start to try to take shortcuts and I need to not do that. Um, that's one of the main reasons I want to do this YouTube thing uh, because I want to make artwork. I don't want to make the same artwork over and over again. Believe it or not, I've sold more paper towels through TikTok than shirts. Oh my, I saw you making, is that? Maybe I don't know your TikTok account. Maybe that's you. There was somebody painting a bunch of paper towels on TikTok. I'm not sure which account that was. Yeah, man, people just love to see their name painted. They don't even want the physical object. I don't think I've ever sold anything. I haven't sold anything through TikTok. I either get people saying that they would, either wanting it free, hey, pay my name, pay my name, or I will give you $100, and I know it's ridiculous, and they're not actually serious. I'll give you $10,000 to teach me how to airbrush. No, you won't. People go crazy for airbrush names on TikTok. I could just sit there and paint TikTok names all day long. They would never stop. But I'm so great these two. Pylon sheets are good, that's what I used to use. I still use those to make mock-ups, and back when I made designs for the website, that's what I would do them on. I'll be making a lot more designs for that site soon and getting it back up and running. If you've been to the website, you see that it says, do not order from me, please, I'm busy. Which is a win to be able to, to say. Moving on. Soon, I'll be done with the big shirts and we can do the smaller shirts, which are more fun to me. What are these?
race car soccer lately I'm deciding whether I need to need to whether I should play some some more race car soccer in life or get into like a different game I really like apex but I'm not very good at it I'm too busy talking to your sis forgot how much the shirts he you know. hey stop talking to my sister Why is she calling me? This is this is my sister, everybody. Hello. She butt dialed. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna do some right-handed. This is gonna be tricky. I'm gonna do some right-handed airbrushing for you, Pat. Oh, here we go. On the line work, too? Oh, man. All right. The camera's not set up for left hand, for right-handed. Oh man, this is, this requires so much more attention. Where'd the muscle memory go? This is tricky. consider that good enough that was hard that was way harder <laughs> I know I promised different styles of text and they are kind of a little bit different but they're not they're the same thing Boring and you want to leave, I understand. Because if you've seen me do one of these, it's going to be the same every single time. There's nothing wrong with elevator music. Okay, let's stop texting me. Overreduced or underreduced? Wait, was that a question? Let me read this question. How did you get your paint, white paint, to flow so nicely? Mine always seems to be overreduced or underreduced. Okay. Um. Hmm. White is definitely the hardest paint to use, and it definitely uh, has a lot to do with how much you reduce it, and that's relative to the pressure that you're painting it. Um. And the, the, the simplest way to do that is to start with a little bit of reducer and add a little bit at a time until you get the consistency that you want. But you probably already know that. Um, 
I can't give you a number or a ratio because I don't I don't really measure my reducer or anything. I would guess around 15% reducer or so. But it, it seems to be more with, with white paint that there's some, some gunk in your airbrush. White paint clogs up real easy, solidifies and gets all boogery. Um, so you have to make sure that your tip dry is clean all the time, the inside of your cone, your tip is clean. Um, if my white paint starts acting funny and not paint, acting smoothly, I take my airbrush apart and clean it and then it's fine. Um, that's something you have to do more often with white paint than any other color for sure. Now both hands at once, that's what I'm doing. Both hands, what do you mean? Oh, one in each hand. I used to do that with, um, I didn't, I mean it wasn't practical, but I did it because I thought it was cool. I would be doing two fills at the same time and like fill a gradient together and I was lame. I'm not trying to show off. Gonna match Pat for the super chat. That's what's up. Thank you guys. <laughs> it still surprises me and is crazy to me that you just wanna put money in the chat just to be nice. I gotta do the drips on that other shirt over there, I forgot. These guys right here. I think I just got paint in my eye. As a fellow airbrusher, any tips for us lefties? Oh, well, do the same thing that you would do with your right hand, but do it with your left hand. And the only difference is where you put the camera. Notice it's on the right side of me. It's the same thing. I don't have any left hand specific airbrushing tips, I don't think. I'll have to think about that. Maybe there's something. Dylan. Thank you, man. You guys are crazy. It's ridiculous. You guys are insane. How much do you reduce your opaque white? That's a good question. Um, not enough in this case. You saw me fill it earlier. I gotta add some more. I'm gonna guess 15 to 20%. I don't have a number. Whoa. If you do that, it's too much. Too much, too much reducer. How can I fix this? Normally I would just pour it back in the bottle. I'm gonna do that. I pilled. See, everything is an exact and perfect science over here, as you can see. That's why the questions confuse me. It's like, exactly what pressure do you use, and how much do you reduce your paint? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Just a little bit and stuff. Pat, I thought you would pay him because my mom would, what? Any left-handed airbrushes versus, oops, actual airbrush itself? Um, no. It's a universal and symmetrical tool. There's no left and rights. Affinity Airbrush, thank you for joining the channel. That kind of support is my favorite kind of support. Well, I don't know if it's about my favorite kind of support. All the support I've gotten today, the surprise and very generous support is great. But those memberships are awesome because they're only $2 a month. And it's like an exact count of how many people think I'm cool. And right now, 12 people think I'm cool. I'm hoping to create another membership or at least add some perks to the existing one, like practice sheets and downloadable fonts and stuff. If you look at my community tab, you'll see a couple posts back. I did a graffiti alphabet and called it like a coloring practice sheet or whatever I said. 
And uh, I'm gonna do a lot more of those because they're fun for me to make. They're good practice for me to make. And hopefully they're good practice for you guys if you like doing that sort of thing. Let me do these drips before I forget. I keep dropping my hose on the ground out of habit, and it's not a good idea to do that. Let's give Dale a super... Don't... Dad, <laughs> put it out. You make me ruin a shirt. It's worth it. I need to... I would have to get, like, a whole other hose set up. I don't even have a hose out here. Two X's, they're still big. Um, let me get some of these shirts off the board so that I can get more room to paint. Just a moment. Also gotta start my elevator music over. to spray up my white paint every night. Do you use siphon fed airbrushes like this? I mean, obviously you'd spray out the paint if you're using gravity fed. I haven't had a problem with just leaving my airbrushes. Ooh, I'm messing all my cameras up right now. I apologize, give me a moment, I'll fix it. Your channel's for the best. As soon as Dale invites me to his house, so you have a guest on the show. Come on over, Fat. You just gotta fly a couple states away. Pat is welcome over. Come on over, Pat. Um, after our, our trip of this week, you can come on over. All right, I'm gonna do two at a time. Maybe I won't do two at a time because you can only hear me if I talk here. How many mason shirts you gotta do? I don't remember. One, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more. Twelve. Twelve more. Ten or twelve, depending on how you do your math. I'm gonna do a different. Oh, I'm gonna go this way, which is it's important. My camera still oh. in the right spot. That worked. I was late. I'm sorry. I had to restart everything. 
YouTube was like, you have an excellent connection to your stream. Connect to your stream to start streaming. I was like... But you said... But... You very watched. All right. Oh, this is a Smo Nova O. Well, his is a lot better than mine. My dream is to get good enough at graffiti style artwork um to start like flying around traveling around whether i drive or whatever but uh to meet other graffiti artists and airbrush artists and do videos and collabs with people all over the place and just hang out with other artists that is what i want to do become famous he's gonna be on everyone's tv I feel like I have a limited audience of people that want to see me on their TV. I appreciate the support, but how many people really want to watch me draw graffiti letters? I don't know. I would need some better content. I would need like some more relatable content for other individuals to also see. Or some subjects to talk about, or something like that. Do I know who Kipto is? Yes, I do. Kipto is really good. Um, he's got a lot of characters and stuff, which I admire his ability to create characters. Is that Kipto? Yeah, that's, that's Kipto. I got him and Force of Nature confused for a second. Both of them are really good. Alright, I'm feeling some gunkiness and resistance inside my airbrush. I need to clean that up or my lines are going to be trailing and it's going to make me sad. Tip. All right. I'm expecting there to be some dried boogers on the inside of this tip. There is a little bit. All right, not too bad. Podcast with Ralph Kelly and Peggy Ains. I've heard that one. Dale, I so want to expose you to many other great graffiti artists out there, man. I would love that. Um, I'm in process of, of trying to do all of that. Like I said, I got a, a trip to take now, which is not a graffiti related trip, but it is a, a work related trip. And after that, I have a trip to California I need to schedule with a machine studio. If you guys have heard of machine studio, I'm gonna go teach him how to airbrush, do like a lesson with him. It's gonna be pretty neat. I hope it's gonna be pretty neat. And he's gonna use his incredible videography skills to make a cool video of it and we'll post it here on the YouTube. Um, I don't know what's going to come of that. I don't know what it's going to look like. I like to just wing it as I go about life. That's why I never schedule my streams more than about 10 minutes in advance because I don't know what I'm going to paint. I appreciate you helping me and supporting me in my growth. I've learned what I've come into contact with, which is unfortunate, is, and it's not all, it's not everybody, but there's a lot of graffiti artists that take a look at what I'm doing and they get real mad and offended that I would call this graffiti and then they call me in names and put clown emojis in the chat. 
which you know, whatever. Like I get, I get way too much feedback from every side of everything to let a comment like that upset me and offend me. But it does like give me like a negative sort of. Well, it doesn't seem like what I'm doing is successful to this audience. So how do I how do I get around it? I don't know how to do it. I know I'm not using spray cans. I know I'm not bombing the side of a building, but. This is still graffiti art to me. No need to call me names. I understand I'm a goofy white kid. I get that. You don't have to watch my channel if you don't want to. Oh no, I'm not gonna bring that negativity around here. Just trying to do my thing. I've always been in this, this not always, last couple years, I've been in this balance between airbrush art and graffiti art. And you know, which audience do I reach out to? Which audience am I in? You know, am I an airbrush artist or am I gonna be a graffiti artist? Um, and I guess both is the answer because I do love this tool. Um, but I love that artwork style a lot more and I want to do more of that and I want to use spray cans and I'm going to when it's not cold outside because I don't like cold weather um, if I do graffiti on an iPad is that, is that graffiti? what about with markers in a sketchbook? you know, I don't know point is, really, for this conversation, is that I'm going to be making a lot of art and stuff that isn't all done with an airbrush anymore, and the name Dale the Airbrush Guy um, might over time stop applying so directly. I'm still going to airbrush, because that's my favorite art form, favorite, favorite tool, but it's not all I'm going to do. I'm still having some issues with this. Thank you for that. Thank you for those comments. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, uh, I've noticed anybody that actually does graffiti, graffiti, illegal vandalism, great artwork, but illegal stuff um, seems to be very uh, salty when it comes to me making a living off the same style artwork. It's not the same style! Or whatever, but... I'm very lucky to be in this position because there's a lot of artists out there, especially graffiti artists, that are a lot better than me at what they do. Um, that's just the truth. I'm pretty good at airbrushing, and I'm getting better at this graffiti stuff, but there's graffiti artists that amaze me and they struggle to pay their bills and it makes me sad and I don't know how to help them other than to teach them how to use one of these so that they can also make a living off of this that's kind of what I'm doing here Dylan I'm with you on that that'd be sweet Yeah, my goal here is not only to create artwork and graffiti, but to teach everyone how to use this airbrush. To A, make airbrushing more mainstream because a lot of the ideas behind airbrushing and the impressions of airbrushing is real negative and old school and uh, vacation t-shirt sort of stuff. And that's not always the case, as you see, I, I am painting lame t-shirts, but you see my other videos, you see you can create cool artwork with an airbrush. It doesn't have to be old school stuff. Um, so I want to bring awareness to the fact that airbrushing is a relevant tool. And then I want to teach people to use it. I 
I need to think of his name. I'm gonna try to think of his name right now. I'm probably not gonna be able to. There's a dude I found on YouTube who does great graffiti work. Um, does a lot of sketches and paintings as well. And uses the airbrush in his graffiti. And I uh, think that he's pretty cool. Except he's got kind of a really crappy attitude like graffiti artists do. And now I'm not going to say his name even if I remember it. What up? Like what you do, Dale? What? Is it me or is it harder to write calligraphy? I don't know. Um, I started out with calligraphy. At the beginning of my airbrush career, I had no lettering talent. I had no, really <laughs> very little artistic talent at all. It's crazy that I even got a job. But I had no lettering skill. I couldn't write an alphabet in any style, uh, let alone graffiti style. But the first one that you learn when you're doing professional at the state fair theme park airbrushing is a script calligraphy style because it's what most people want it's the fastest and simplest and it's just universal um, and that was really easy for me to pick up um, once I got control of the airbrush the rules that go into the calligraphy lettering are pretty simple but I have seen that that's the lettering style of mine that's probably changed the most over time I, I enjoy doing calligraphy style. I don't necessarily like it in my personal artwork style, but when I'm doing t-shirt orders and I've got to do a bunch of script shirts, that's fun to do. It's real quick and satisfying. They're smooth to knock out. I got no complaints about those. Pat's really good with calligraphy style. Ken Johnson's really good with his cursive and calligraphy. And I don't think anybody's ever gonna beat Jamie Rodriguez. RIP and peace. Good show. Got to bounce. Happy painting, my guy. Thank you, man. Thanks for hanging out. More airbrushes at my supply. All of them are sold out. You're right. Um, I don't think. I have no idea. Hold on. You were talking about my supply store that I created a while back, um, which is currently still up and live, but. Everything is like sold out. I'm afraid to cut it, shut it down because I don't know what's gonna happen. I just wanna keep it there. But at the moment, I have no plans to restock things. Um, in the future, somehow to some capacity, I will either sell directly or point to with a partnership, which I'm, I'm working on. Um, that's the spray gunner place I've been talking to, I'm talking about. Like, hey, you can go buy everything you need from them. Um, and it's true. We're going to make that look good. I don't know if that... I, don't, I have no idea what's going to come with that. Um, I am going to sell airbrushes in some capacity through them or through myself or something. Right now, I have no plans on restocking the airbrush supply site or worrying about that. That would take too much of my time right now to worry about opening a new store and fulfilling warehouse stuff with airbrushes and boxes and that's what I'm trying to get out of with the t-shirt thing and I'm gonna pick that right back up with a different business. Um, if you're looking for Omnis, you can get them from a lot of places. Uh, don't wait on me. I like that N. Have you ever done a shirt with my name? I have before. I don't wear a lot of airbrush stuff. I'm wearing this shirt. This is one I designed. It's in the merch. I think I pinned it. Oh, it's a similar one I pinned, but... It's not an airbrush. I'm not gonna wear an airbrush shirt in public. I know that's silly to talk about as someone who sells airbrush shirts. But that's not my style. I'm not gonna, that's not what I wear. Every time I paint this halo, it looks kind of goofy. It looks like a floppy donut. I love 
called donuts? Did you, do you know, do you realize how many different variations of M&Ms there are? US Airbrush Supply is great. Still struggling with graffiti. You make it look so freaking easy, but watching YouTube channel is helping me a lot. I will happily teach you how to do all of those things. Um, graffiti letters. First of all, back to the M&Ms. This season of Christmas shopping and being at stores and stuff a little bit, I've come across the M&M section. And I didn't know they had like a whole aisle of M&M's. So I've been getting the family size boxes, packs or whatever, of all these different variations of M&M's. And I've got some reviews for you, just off the top of my head. Um, pretzel M&M's are one of the best. The crunch and the saltiness of the pretzel really adds to the chocolate. I like it a lot. Caramel, I rate that like a four. It's too chewy. I don't like the caramel M&M so much. Uh, peanut and peanut butter are an all-time favorite of mine. You can't really beat those. Thank you, Affinity Airbrush. What is up, man? You guys are. You make me smile every time, man. Um, crunch. There's there's an M&M called Crunchy M&Ms, and it's just it's like a Whopper, but it's an M&M at the same time. Those were surprisingly delicious. They're all the the crunchy ones are all the mini M&Ms though, which is fine because you grab a handful of them and just crush them. And what's the other one? The fudge brownie ones. The fudge brownie M&Ms are they're chewy. They have like a lasting flavor. It really does feel like you're eating a brownie covered in M&M chocolate candy, whatever. And that's my review on those. And it's like it's like the Oreos have all these different types of Oreos. I don't think we need all that. But anyway, um, painting graffiti letters is something that seems daunting at first, but if you just think about them like block or bubble letters and then expand on the shapes of those and get a little more stylistic with them, you're doing great. Stop bringing these M&Ms to our home. I can't help it. We're almost done with them. You best believe if there's another variety that I haven't tried before, there will be a bag of them on the counter. So good luck with that. Those no-name airbrushes, what Quick Connect works with them. Um, the no-names have an 8-inch fitting at the bottom of the, the thing. This isn't a no-name. Um, there's a couple different sizes of fitting on the bottom of airbrushes. Badger has an M5 metric connection. Iwata has an eighth of an inch connection, as well as most other airbrushes, including the no-name airbrushes. Um, and then Pache and Thayer and Chandler have their own proprietary connections that I don't know the name of. Um, no names and Iwatas use the eighth of an inch connection. And that's just the, the bottom part. And then quick release itself, this end of it and this end of things is all pretty much universal. It's always the same um, as far as I've seen. The only part you're worried about is the part that connects to the bottom of the airbrush itself. And I have a bunch of adapters here. My, my Badger M5 is going into an adapter to get to 1 8th, and then I get a standard 1 8th quick release thing. Hi, Michaela. Yep. Brittany is my wife, my lovely wife, who is wrestling a toddler right now, who didn't sleep last night because toddler. Now that that's done, let's do the exact same thing again. I'm gonna try them to replace my Iwata Neos. 
definitely um i don't i recommend having a variety of airbrushes um as you see i've got several i got some some vega 2000s over there another iwata a master airbrush which i stopped using the master um just i just stopped using it it's not as good Wait, so you're not at your house. They're at my house. They're inside. That's the garage to the inside of the house. I'm in the garage. Michaela is not. Michaela is at her own house. She's my sister. Um, what am I writing? Mason. <laughs> Forgot entirely what I was doing. I'll be honest, guys. I didn't expect this live stream to be such a success and be so fun being the same design over and over again. But it has allowed me to focus more on conversation, which is great. Um, same thing, I guess. If you're paying attention, you can see the little differences. I'll try to put more of these little cuts and stuff in this one. But Pat, if you're watching still, Graffiti is easy. Space everything out just like you would do with block, and then visualize those strokes the same way that you do. But you just have to think in advance a little bit about because you have to layer letters over top of each other. That's the the really the biggest thing as far as complexity goes. Is you can't just have a simple letter shape. You have to have parts of that letter overlap other parts of the letter. You don't have to. I mean, you do whatever you want to do, but. That complexity that you add is the layering of letters. And the hard part of that that I see from people is being able to do that while maintaining consistency in the letters and some sort of like mental algorithm that you have and maintaining legibility. And I fall into a hole of thinking that things are legible because I know what they say. And in reality, people have no idea what it says and I don't want to do that. Dylan, I agree. That's exactly what is going on here. He says, I can't imagine the enjoyment it would bring to have a small group of friends to chat with. Dylan, you were here. Um, besides that, I pretty much do this by myself all the time, man. It's been me in the garage for some years. And uh, talking to myself is something that I, I do sometimes. Listening to audiobooks and the Bible app <laughs> and listening to the same playlists all the time and stuff, but having some people to talk with, even if they're not here in person, has been really awesome. Um, I was welcomed in by this YouTube community far quicklier, quicklier, that's a word now, uh, than I expected to be, and I wish I would have started sooner, you know? I can't believe I said quicklier. A 10 by 12 in the backyard would be cool. What are we talking about? Dun, dun, dun. Just got a Badger 155. That's one I haven't tried yet, but I get a lot of, a lot of good comments about it. Yeah, getting a font style locked in your head, getting, getting an alphabet that you can just go to without thinking about it. Um, yeah, that's that's what it all is, though. That's every font style. It's just another one you gotta gotta throw in there. If you wanted me to do some old English text right now, or even like a tattoo style font, I would kind of struggle with that because I don't have those alphabets built up. I could make them, right? I could make a shirt with one of those designs, but it would take longer because I would have to think about every letter and like design the letter in my head before I painted it. I don't have those fonts just ready to be grabbed and used in the old nog. Can't wait to paint something else. Love from India. Love to India, man. 
Can you paint my Roblox thing? <laughs> you would be surprised how many times I've been asked to paint somebody's Roblox name. If your Roblox name is Mason, then yes, I absolutely will. And I do. I like to do some some streams where I'm just taking requests and painting names. Um, that's not what this one is for. And now I'm doing some some paid orders, knocking out a commissioned group of shirts to help me pay for my mortgage. And my electricity bill and my $200 Comcast bill. Dang on it. You guys with your streaming and your internet. Dun, dun, dun. I gotta go up. God bless you. How do you get your lines? I can't get it down. Alright. Smooth lines. Um, same thing with white as it is with any other color. Get close to the shirt. Like this is a spit. Let me let me see. Yeah, I am real close to the shirt. My finger would not fit between how close I am to the shirt. Um, and you paint quickly, and you end everything in a dagger stroke, which you know what a dagger stroke is. It's just when you taper off. Um, get close to the shirt and move smoothly. I mean. It's a lot easier said than done, of course, but it's really that simple. Mostly when I see new airbrush artists trying to airbrush, I see them way back here, and I see them painting like this, and you don't do that, and you're using the wrists, so you don't do that. Hold it down, keep the air down when you're painting, paint really close to the shirt, and paint with your whole upper body, your shoulders and your elbows, and not your wrists. Um, you guys can see me on the webcam, kinda. Like, I'm using all of my shoulders and body to do this. The more muscle, I mean not the more muscle groups, but the bigger muscle movements you can make, the smoother those muscle movements are going to be. Just That's just physics, like leverage and stuff, you know? Do, 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 do. I have old vids of me. I have old vids of me too. I'm gonna see if I can find one. I posted a video a long time ago of me painting one of the first shirts that I painted for fun, and it's not good. I probably have twice as much content recorded and not posted as content that is posted. Do, 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 do. Moving on. Oh, wait, I have I have ten more after this. No I don't. These are the XLs. I might just have like seven more. Super fun. Go cook for the kids. Yes, reach out to me on Instagram. I'd be happy to message you and figure something out. TikToks are the easiest. Um, the hard part is condensing content down to 60 seconds. And really, it's better to get it down to like 30 or 40 seconds. My new technique my strategy for making TikTok videos and these YouTube short videos is to paint a shirt, record the whole thing, change my camera angle a bunch of times to keep it interesting, and then go back and edit it. Um, after, uh, first I find a, a song to go with it, find the 60 second portion of that song that I want to edit it to, 
and then cut the video to the sound, to the music. Um, the most recent one I did with the rainbow design, I didn't, did I post it? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Um, the YouTube version is actually like two and a half minutes long, but the TikTok and Instagram one is 60 seconds long. You see that I cut it to the music. It doesn't really take any longer to do that. Um, and it's just, I think it's cooler, it's more fun. And it seems to work with audience retention. Once you notice that something is synced with the music, um, you want to listen to the rest of the music. So I pick another elevator music track. Do it a thing. What software do I use? I use Premiere Pro on my computer a lot of the times. And I also just use InShot. I-N-S-H-O-T, which is a phone app that does a great job if I'm editing something short like a TikTok video. Um, it's a lot harder to sync to music with that. So if you're doing music syncing, you probably want to sit down at a computer. At least I do. I don't do complicated editing. This really just cuts. I've found that time lapses, I guess I gotta just quantify, um, speeding up the video and doing like a real fast motion video of me painting really, really fast um, isn't as interesting to me as cuts of real time painting from painting one thing to painting the next thing but still painting in real time or even like one and a half times the speed. Um, in the past I've always wanted to show every second of the shirt because you need to see everything um, but the truth is you don't need to see everything and once I start doing a drop shadow here for one second you know what I'm doing and I can just skip to the end of me doing a drop shadow you don't need to see all that this is boring TikTok has um, made our attention span 60 seconds long so I have to work with that. It makes it really hard to make a longer format YouTube video also. Yes, Dylan, you are right about doing music on a, any kind of video. I have a Epidemic Sound subscription. I also have Artlist, but Epidemic Sound came with a different partnership that I have acquired. Uh, so I have both of those places. I really need a playlist. Um, I don't know. I need something like what's playing now to play in the background of live streams, but then I need just more music to play all the time. Um, but it's all got to be royalty free or included in my license and stuff. This is some boogery paint. It's my fault, it's super old paint. I'm missing some comments. Yes, world deep free music producers are what's up. They really should be celebrated more and I want someone to pay them. Um, it almost makes me wish that they were just on a paid site like this so that they got paid for their music. I think the society that we're moving towards is one that celebrates artists and creators of things and is going to rely less on people working hard to make a living. Um, Fast forward to the future, we have much more efficient forms of culture and cultivating and everything like that. We're going to have a lot of people who have the ability to do nothing, um, and resources are still generated and all of that. It would be awesome to see people making artwork, making music, etc., and being paid 
and incentivize just for that, which is what we're seeing right now with TikTok and creation and YouTube and everything else. And I think it's awesome that we finally are at a point in society where you can just do something entertaining and make a living and not have to be a movie star. So that's cool. Um, what do I have next? I need to take the shirts off boards again for a second. What brand of black am I using? It's Createx, the regular, not the wicked colors. Have you seen Mike's brush? I have seen Mike's brush, a couple of them. Um, he's kind of different. I've only seen one, a little bit of his stuff. Um, I don't know much about him, but I'm gonna check him out. You guys sit up there again as I turn on OBS to see what you guys are looking at. I'm gonna get these shirts and I'll be back in a moment. Weight is the game. It's moments like these that I expect everyone to leave the live stream. And they did. Not everyone. All of the visitors left. Checked out Bloodshot Airbrush. I have not. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Where and how do we sign up to be a member of your channel? That's something I guess I can make more clear and obvious. Um, if you look below the video, there should be a join button next to the subscribe button. And you can do that there, or you can go to my channel and then hit the membership button button or something. You're looking for a join button. And thank you very much for even looking for that button. Yes. That is correct. It's essentially a Patreon built into YouTube. It's something that kinda new-ish, kinda. And uh, I'd rather keep everybody on the same app on YouTube instead of making everybody go around everywhere else. Welcome Dylan, 
Thank you for your support, sir. Welcome aboard. Nice to have you here. This has been the most supportive and lucrative <laughs> chat ever. Easy airbrush sporting the cheese emoji that comes with your membership package. I forgot about those. I need to make the rest of those emojis. Make some cool ones. You also got the airhead emoji. Um, I haven't heard much about the airheads in a while. That was something that the first couple streams I had some some consistent fans and they named themselves the airheads which I kind of thought was a little bit lame to be honest with you um, but they were all about it so I made an airhead logo on a balloon I was 16 years old on my gmail photo <laughs> oh my goodness Dylan you've always been an anti google type of bro don't want them to get my data give me back my data I'm gonna sell it to them never mind I won't be political oh you mean this guy yeah that I wish I could just snap my fingers and have this drop shadow done. It's my least favorite part. I'm going to keep that in mind, and when I make new designs, I'm not going to put a drop shadow on them. Because I can do much more interesting stuff way faster than this boring drop shadow. Like, I could do a... Never mind. Instead of... Yeah, I can just do this. Something like that instead of the filled stroke would be super fast and then I could just kind of go and it would look just as good and be way faster but because I need to put some consistency in all these shirts I can't change it up now I gotta keep on going those were the Snowden days We've all gone through our phases, Dylan. I'm thinking I'm gonna learn how to play a song. All right, Pat, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you Friday for lunch. That's absolutely true. I'm looking forward to it. He told me this burger deal is unforgettable. I am going to come hungry. We need to talk and figure out exactly what that day is going to look like. But I will see you and talk to you later, man. Thank you for that comment. I think your name is Aya. Aya. You said it in comments before. I don't know how to pronounce those uh, characters or anything like that. But thank you. All right, what's going on here? The problem is in the airbrush, not in the bottle. Like to ease. I'm out too. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I know this is long and getting boring. Um, thanks for chilling with me. I got booger salt in my airbrush. Yes, I am Aya. Is it is Aya? How do you pronounce it? Or Aya? I guess you can't tell me. Aya one, Aya two. I forgot the thing. 
thing on the outside. Meh. I'd be done with these if I was doing them uh, Henry Ford style. I am high up arts. High up arts. What size PVC? Okay, uh, the PVC airbrush holder is made with, I don't know. I don't know. The size of the PVC doesn't matter as much as the holes do. These holes are half inch holes and they're spaced two inches apart on center. Um, the holes could be a little bit bigger than that, um, but half inch seems to work pretty good. And those type of holders only work good for siphon feed airbrushes. If you have the gravity feed with a cup on top and you don't have a hose on your airbrush, then it's top heavy and it falls over and it makes you sad. So if you have siphon feed airbrushes, those are great. And you don't have to use PVC. You can do the same thing with a block of wood or whatever. Fizzle. I hope your productions are being produced productively. Jesse Rib, welcome. Thank you for joining the channel. This is a this is a fantastic live stream, guys. I am with you. This is sweet. All right, next is, oh, the same shirt again. Okay, cool. I'm glad that new people are coming into the stream and coming and going while I'm doing something boring, doing the same thing. It's been the same shirt the whole time. Um, it's good that there's a new audience, so you only have to watch it once. Like everyone's just seeing one go round, not 30 or whatever, 20. What time is it? It's 4.30. Post office is closed today, so I'm not even worried about that. Gotta go. Thanks for hanging out, Pablo. <laughs> yeah, guys. Also, if you want to support me and get something in return other than a thank you and a wave, shirts like these are available on my merch store. Um, I'm gonna make a lot more designs. I have trouble sometimes coming up with the content to make those. Like, what do I paint? What's gonna be universally accepted? Because uh, I can't do a merch design with somebody's name because only one person wants that that guy. Uh, so I do stuff like alphabets and maybe seasonal topics or something like that. But if you guys have suggestions on what you want to see in the merch shop, um. Uh, Send me messages and stuff, because I'll, I'll do those things. My elevator music turned off again. I must have reached my floor. I'm going to turn that back on in a second. Sounds like my playlist needs to be about four times longer than it is. Da -da -da -da. Control T, space bar, not the same song. Start that back over. Airbrush squeak should be your sign off. I need to get to, um, I can play some, I have to get into it. I have to like warm up for a minute, but if I, I can play like twinkle twinkle little star and like, sometimes I can do it pretty good. But yeah, I'm gonna do, one of these days, I'm gonna make a YouTube intro. That's like four seconds long. Oops. 
So that's gonna be like a little tiny cool animated logo video and a or something like that. Sometimes I'm afraid it's annoying. I do it subconsciously a lot. And I don't know how loud it is on that mic. It might be super loud. Ouch. I'm getting a finger cramp. I need to clean my airbrush again because it's getting all gunky and stuff. I'll be down here in a second. Can't really hear me over here. If you feel like your paint is getting gunky, you can feel it in the trigger when you're pulling back. You can feel like something isn't quite right. You can look at my needle, my, my trigger, and you can see that like it's not, it's going back slowly. It should be snapping forward faster than you really even see. That means there's junk up in the, the way and that's not what you want to see. So if that's happening a lot, you can reduce your paint more and kind of prevent that. Now I'm feeling resistance in my trigger, in my needle when I'm pushing it in. I know there's dried paint all up inside here. I'm going to clean that out, otherwise I'm going to get trailing lines like this one and this one. And that means that I let go of the trigger, but the trigger didn't go forward fast enough, so it still was spraying paint. And that's not, it's not good. You can't turn your pencil off. Alright, so to clean my airbrush, I'm going to do my best not to get paint on this shirt, first of all. I'm going to push my needle all the way through once or twice and wipe it off. And I'm going to actually go do it backwards. And instead of the instead of the sharp side of the needle coming through, I'm going to use the back of the, air, the needle. And that's going to do a better job of pushing all that dried paint out. I'm just going to do that a couple of times. I feel that resistance. I'm kind of like trying to get the needle to catch on some of that dried paint and push it out and you can see maybe you probably can't see it I'm getting some boogers out I'm basically I'm picking my nose if my nose was an airbrush all right and that's good enough I doesn't need to be super perfectly clean just a little bit and then while I'm at it I'm gonna push my needle forward way too far and put my finger here so it doesn't slide back and I'm going to gently use the needle to scrape the inside of this cone super gently. You don't want to scratch the cone, you don't want to bend your needle, but I'm just seeing if there's any dried paint inside that cone. You can feel it. Everything I'm doing, I'm feeling the resistance, a very light touch, and I can feel that there is no dried paint. It's actually really clean, and I should be good enough to just push that needle back in and put my cone back on, reset my needle, make sure it's flush against the front of that cone, a little bit of pressure on your needle. Tighten up that chuck nut. And you should see that snapping back into place quickly as we want it to happen. Now we won't have any more problems. I'm running out of paint, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up and add a little bit more reducer this time than last time. how super thick this black paint is right now. It's like syrup. Um, this has been a problem with Createx this year during the whole COVID 2020 Dagon stuff. Um, they've had some manufacturing issues with just their black paint. And it's just been really thick, um, which is different, but it's okay because you can just add more reducer than normal and really you end up with like Basically, this is a concentrated bottle of black paint. Um, so it's been just going a lot farther. So I fill it up. It's really hard because it's flowing so slowly to tell how much, but I try to fill it up about halfway. And then this time I'm gonna put like a two to one ratio paint to reducer. 
don't know. I don't measure. You know I don't measure. You guys know this. I discovered you when I saw one of your YouTube stories. That's interesting. That's something that I want to learn a little bit more about how all that works. Um, at first, I thought YouTube stories were just going to be for the people that followed me. Um, but I'm noticing that my stories on YouTube are getting actually a lot of views. Um, a lot more than I have subscribers for. Put my charger cable back into my thing. Okay. So that's really cool that you came from a YouTube story. Oh yeah, that feels a whole lot better. You also need to clean the tip of your airbrush, not just the needle, but the tip where it all meets. If there's dried paint on there, and this is stabbing my finger, and yes, it hurts, um, but it's necessary. If you don't clean that, then the airflow coming out of the front regulator of your airbrush is not going to be a perfect circle, which means it's going to push your paint out of your airbrush in a non-circular pattern, and, and it's going to make you sad. Thank you, Cody. Cody says I'm really super ultra cool. He said I'm the coolest person in the world. Well, that's awesome. I didn't, yeah, I wasn't aware that you could see stories from other people. I guess I was aware because I'm looking at other people's stories. I just didn't think mine would pop up as a relevant story. Gray paint keeps on clogging up. It's not because the paint's too thick. It's clogging up in a way that tells me it's dried paint boogers in here because it's flowing smoothly and then it completely stops flowing, which means it was nice and good to go until it got clogged with a booger. So I'm going to get rid of a booger. Hopefully. I don't know. I'll just I'll just do that for now. Don't do this to me right now. It might have worked this way all the way. You can see it. I can see a bunch of little debris particles coming out. That's what I get for letting my paint sit for a year and a half. All right, good enough for that. How do you get started with airbrushing? First, you get the gray paint off of your hand because you make messes. Best way to get started airbrushing is to buy an airbrush kit. There are several out there. Um, really depends on what you're going to be airbrushing, which which one you're going to get. Um, you need to buy a dual action airbrush. Most airbrushes are, but you might come across some brands and some styles that look like a good airbrush, but they're single action airbrushes. That's not what you want. You cannot do this kind of artwork with a single action airbrush. You need a dual action airbrush, which means that you can push down on the trigger for air and then pull back for paint. With a single action airbrush you get air and paint at the same time and you can't vary the amount of paint, it's just on or off. And that is not good. That's good for model painting, it's good for using stencils on like nail art or something, but it's not good for doing artwork like this. I like siphon feed ones, that's what this bottle is at the bottom, it's a siphon feed airbrush. And a good quality professional airbrush like this one is about $80, which is a lot. But if you calculate the cost of a spray can, 
And then you can do either one <laughs> piece on a wall or you can airbrush forever. Um, so, take your pick. And then you want to start with practice drills and everything else. You need to learn trigger control. You need to paint with the air down the whole time. Some things that you need to learn is that when you're painting, you don't want to paint a line and let go and then paint a line and then paint a line. You want to hold down the air the whole time. Come on, great paint. Fine. You want to hold down the air the whole time when you're painting and just use the front back motion of the airbrush to vary your line width from zero paint to as much paint as you need. That's the most fundamental thing. You need to start doing that from the very beginning to establish that muscle memory. The airbrush I'm using, these are called Omni 3000s by Badger. But there are many different styles out there. Iwata is a great band. Uh, no Name is a great brand. brand. There's some links in the description of this video to where you can buy some airbrushes, I think. There you go, there's that booger. Check out that booger. Gross. Okay. Does the paint wash off? It doesn't wash off. Um, I mean, eventually it fades, kinda. But we wash it, or I mean, we heat press it, which means we cure the paint with high heat on a press and that seals it all into the shirt so it doesn't really wash out. Any, kind, any shirt fades over time a little bit. But yes, this Omni 3000 airbrush is $80. It's a bit of an investment to get started, just like learning an instrument or something and buying a good guitar, you know, or something like that. You can get a cheap one, but you're gonna have trouble with it. If you really are serious about learning the thing, you need to buy a professional, good quality instrument. Now, there's airbrushes that cost over $600. You don't need that. Um, I don't even need that. But a good quality brand will give you a much better time. Do I do lessons? I don't do actual one-on-one -on -one lessons at the moment. I might do something like that in the future. But right now, I am trying to get this YouTube channel up and running. I've got some other things in the works. And I need to focus my attention on being able to do those things. And something like classes would take a lot of my time at the moment. Instead, I'd like to teach you by live streaming and my other videos. Sorry, my camera is not the right spot. Okay. Who inspired me to do this? Um, well, I started... It's a good question, I guess. Um, when I was a kid, I remember walking by the airbrush shop at a theme park. And I saw the, the guys there airbrushing. And I had no idea what that was they were doing, but it looked super cool. And fast forward 15 years, 10 years, whatever, I was in high school. And one of my friends worked at the company that did that same airbrush shop at that same place. And they suggested that I apply for a job there. I had no artistic lettering skill at the time, but they gave me a job anyway and taught me how. And it was really fun. So I kept doing it kept learning how to do it and uh, turned it into a profession instead of just that part-time job. I built an online business out of it and that grew and grew and I started making videos and those videos started getting popular and I'm leaning towards trying to make more of those videos with my own artwork instead of painting a bunch of t-shirts for customers and that's where I'm at right now in life. I want to teach people how to airbrush and create cool artwork and videos about it. Thank you, Shalania. That's a sweet name. No 
soy inglés. No hablo español. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you guys. I appreciate it. This paint is making me sad. I only have this one and two more left. Can I get it done? Or should I take a break? The stream is getting really long. I'm getting tired and hungry. I think this might be my last one, guys. Keep it up, keep it up. Are you also good at graffiti or are you really good at airbrushing? Um, well, I'm trying to do graffiti with an airbrush. That's kind of where I'm, the direction that I'm going. I have paint all over the place. Um, I like graffiti style artwork a lot. And once it gets warm outside again, I'm gonna bust out some spray cans and start doing some larger scale graffiti pieces, probably in my backyard. I do want to learn how to use cans. I know how to use cans. I don't have nearly as much experience with spray cans as I do with an airbrush. So it's something that I want to gain some wisdom in because this last year or so, I've really been inspired to do more graffiti artwork, but it's been cold outside, and I've been busy, and I haven't been able to do that, because this is my job, this right here. So, with the growth that I've experienced this year, it gives me the ability to start doing some more artwork, and that artwork is gonna be some spray can stuff. Oh, it's not two more, it's four more. I'm definitely not doing four more. I'll do this last one. This will be the last one, and I'm gonna hop off of here, get some lunch, dinner, whatever food this is of the day. And I'll probably be back tomorrow. I've done like 15 of these on this stream so far. They're getting a little bit old and boring. I'm super thankful for the order. This stuff like this helps me pay the bills. But man, it can be tedious, you know what I mean? been playing with how my letters overlap each other lately. Kind of all this paradoxical effect where I got the M on top of the A, but I also have the A on top of the M and they kind of like intersect in cool ways like that. And that's been kind of fun. What's your favorite design that you have made? There was a couple good ones I did recently. Um, I made videos about them. There's a shirt, uh, the Smacks t-shirt. Smacks. If I remember, I will link it in the the, the, the card right there. And you can watch that. Um, but that, you're not gonna see that right now. It's only if you're watching the recording of this stream type video. Um, you can Google it. You can look up my channel, S-M-A-X. That was my favorite recent t-shirt design that I did. Um, it's just one that I have complete freedom over. It's not super elaborate or complicated or anything. So I just had a lot of fun with it, and I had a lot of fun with the video. It's by far not my most popular video, but it's one of my favorites. I like painting letters. I like keeping it simple and just doing lettering. Is airbrushing similar to a spray can? Yeah. Um... Let me look at this. Keep up on the comments. Dun, 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 dun. These, yeah, T-E, these letters are very simple. Um, it's for an order. 
when I'm painting the orders, I have to make sure that what I do is relatively legible. I can't get too crazy with the lettering, I gotta keep it simple. Um, and it's also a matter of how much time I need to spend on each shirt. If I get real crazy and complex with them, especially in a big group bulk order like this, that's just going to multiply the time it takes for me to fulfill this order. So, commissioned work like this is simple, but then my work is more complex when I have time. But the question before that was, was airbrushing similar to spray cans? And yes, it is in a lot of ways. Um, obviously, you're spraying paint farther away you are from the surface the bigger your spray pattern is and your paint layer is the same way and you know a lot of things are exactly the same they're very relatable uh, there are some differences though and the main difference that I've found is uh, the opacity of the paints you notice I did these black outlines first and then I'm coming back with this gray right on top of the black but it's not covering up the black right you can still see the black through the gray and that's because this gray paint is transparent you don't see a lot of that in spray cans so that allows me to and i prefer to paint the outlines first and then come in with the fill um, and with spray cans you can't do that you have to do the fills first and then the outlines on top of everything because everything layers each other uh, other than that an airbrush really is just a precise spray can. And you can get opaque spray can or opaque airbrush colors too, so. I just prefer the transparent ones because they spray a little easier. They're very similar. If you know one, you can learn the other pretty quickly. Because they are pretty similar. They just say it's a simple piece. <laughs> it is a simple piece. As far as uh I don't know. It's relatively simple piece. I get a lot of practice. Doing this professionally, it means I have to paint somebody's name, <laughs> a new name that I've never painted before in different letters and different combinations, in different styles and color schemes, all up to the customer all the time. So I have a lot of practice knocking out a huge variety of graffiti style designs and in that light this is a pretty simple one Ding. that's done just done Yeah guys, it's five o'clock. I've been doing this for a minute, like eight minutes, like an hour. Like, like, how long is this stream? This stream is like two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, guys. I'm gonna take a break with my very blurry screen all of a sudden. Come back, come back. There it is. It's still blurry, whatever. Guys, thank you for hanging out. I had a great time with you. I had got an incredible amount of support from you guys today. I can't get the thing focused. Whatever. So many super chats. So many members came in. I'm very incredibly thankful for all of the support. It's been so fun to hang out with you. This has probably been the most fun stream yet because doing the same design over and over was kind of boring, but the amount of conversation that we got to have with that has been fantastic. Um, I'm hungry and I have to pee, so I'm going to go. And... I'll see you guys soon. God bless you. I love you very much. Thank you. You make this possible. Goodbye.